Hello all you hardcore boxing fans out there, how are you doing? It's Big Porky here, the voice of hardcore boxing. Now, I've just finished a couple of mouthfuls of a Chinese and I've just opened this uh, bottle of red that I got that I was given by my mate, uh, Chateau Lafitte, whatever it is, very nice but I won't pay that much for wine myself. Um, uh, end of the day, it's only a few grapes, isn't it? But I like to have a bit of a bit of a glass of wine after a meal or during a meal. Right, straight into business. No messing about. No messing about. Whatever. I'm in a bit of a state, so I'm going to be behind camera today. I'm a casual. Right. There's a little whisper doing the rounds that Callum Smith's manager, trainer, advisor, Tesco Joe, as in the man that's not got an elite win on his record from a generation of fighters, Tesco Joe. He's saying that Callum will fight Eubank and Danny Jacobs at 168. Now, Danny Jacobs, overrated in my opinion, uh, failed at elite level. Eubank is basically a gimmick, living off his dad's name, and he'd get blown away by Callum Smith at 168. I don't, I don't know if he'd take the fight. Now, they're the only options open to them, and just... And John Ryder, but the John Ryder fight, they're just dismissing it because it's not as much money as the other ones. So it looks like they're not going to get the Canelo fight. And they're up in arms. Uh, Tesco's apparently upset a few people at Mac True. Callum's in middle. I think Callum Smith will fight anybody personally. But. I also think that it's not as good as people are making out. Yeah, Paul Smith keeps saying, oh, you were hitting me on arms and really hurting me and you were catching me and this and that, but we're talking Paul Smith here, a.k.a. Smigger Smig. You know, uh, he's not exactly a blown... He's not... Paul Smith, Smigger Smig, right? Look, I tipped him for a world title, I got it wrong, but Paul Smith's not exactly top level is he if he's getting caught on arms he should be shouldn't he off a good fighter Callum's a world level fighter but that's it he just scrapes world level in fact Callum Smith is Euro level stroke world level he's nowhere near elite and he's not established at world level he's been carefully matched so people need to get a grip now, Joe Gallagher, Matthew Macklin, they're all raving about him, and Michael Buffer, but they're all got the snort, they've all got the snouts in the matchroom trough. There's nobody got the snout in the matchroom trough any more than Buffer and Macklin. The only people that can equal Buffer and Macklin are Darren Barker, Johnny Nelson, and the man himself, Helmet of the Decade, Tony Bellew. The man that's not beat a champion. They're the only people that can match uh, Buffer, Macklin and Tesco Joe. They're the only people that can do that. Nobody else can do that as far as I'm concerned. Nobody. Right? Nobody whatsoever matches Buffer, Macklin, Barker Bellew. And Gallagher, they are the original rimmers. Throw in Jake Wood and Spencer Oliver, Adam Smith, and basically you've got an orgy of rimming. Could you imagine them lot, right, at the matchroom darts? Can you imagine them lot sat at the matchroom darts? With Anthony Levis, Frank Smith, and all the rest of them. It would be a matchroom loving. Pass the baby oil and the Vaseline. That's all I will say to that one, but... Callum Smith against Eubank, that's pay-per-view. Callum Smith against Jacobs, not pay-per-view. Callum Smith against John Ryder, 
I'd like to see pay-per-view because I want to see John Ryder get paid, but technically it's not a pay-per-view fight, is it? So we have to stick to morals. It's a good Sky Headline fight, but that is it. Eubanks box office. Callum is not box office. You know, it, Callum Smith couldn't sell a pint of iced water out of a, a freezer to somebody starving of water in a desert. That's it, Callum Smith's caked in spots, he doesn't sell pay-per-view, he's, he's not pay-per-view, that's it, end of. So, Demetrius Andrade calling out Jermaine Charlo, who cares? Jesus, who cares? Not interested. Somebody told me that Eddie Earns, you know, been talking to Tesco Joe again, God, I bet Eddie Earns' ears are frying after Tesco Joe, but... Somebody's told me that uh, Tesco Joe's... Uh, sorry, Eddie's been talking to Tesco Joe about the Boatsy fight. I mean, who gives a shit about Boatsy? I mean, come on. He's 12 and old, but who cares about Boatsy? Boatsy's only on the scene because... You know, he's a, he's a Femi fighter, isn't he? He's signed by Femi and Freddie Cunningham, but I hope... Callum Johnson smashes him to pieces. That'll be the only time that I'm cheering a Tesco Joe fighter on because I like Callum Johnson. Dennis likes him, I like him, and Carl Froch likes him. He's very popular. I like Callum Johnson. I hope he smashes Boatsy to bits and puts him, you know, out at game. I don't like Boatsy. I think he's a rimmer. He doesn't sell a ticket, so come on, Callum Johnson. Team Callum Johnson. So I'll back Joe Gallagher on that. And I'm not a Gallagher fan, but you know, he can't he can't be a crap trainer. Look what he's done, but he's not as good as what he makes out. He likes to leave his fight he likes to throw his fighters under a bus. He, he put Paul Smith in with Andre Ward, I mean, come on. Do you know what I mean? He won't put Callum Smith in with George Groves, but he put Paul Smith in with Andre Ward, so work it out. We know what Joe Gallagher is, don't we? He's made millions out of them lot. Joe Gallagher's made millions out of, uh, millions out of generation of fighters. And his best win out of them all is a shot George Groves. It is what it isn't. Right. Eddie Hearn. Can't help himself, can he? The man's just sheer greed. But he's running about and he's telling people that... Does own needs to put their monthly subscriptions up to fifty dollars. Well, this is how I look at it, Eddie. You're shooting yourself in foot. It's desperado stakes for you now, isn't it, son? So, Eddie doing a uh, Eddie Earn doing an hundred and seven minute interview with Kogi Bear in the matchroom officers, right? Drinking uh, a fitness drink and basically saying. I like to get uh, get one up on everybody else. While they're in bed, I'm doing, I'm working. How is that working? You don't know what the word is, work, Eddie. To me, working is digging cabbages up in Lindholm Prison cabbage fields, you know, for six hours a day in winter. That, to me, is work. Not sat in an office talking to Coogie Bear, who's hanging out at back here for views. That is not work. But it is what it is, Eddie, so jog on. Jesus. Eddie, people need to bug Eddie and forget Spencer Fear and Eddie, I'll fight you. I'll smash you to bits. You're nothing. Right. Dubois. Daniel Dubois, I've heard, is putting the word out that he'll fight Dylan White. Well, will Dylan White fight him? I don't know. Probably. But who knows? Would politics get in middle of it? Well, Dylan likes to hide behind politics. In my opinion, I think Dillian White's a great fighter. I think he's got a world-class left hook, but I also think that he's very calculating in the people that he fights. And Dillian just wants to fight knockovers. It's a typical schoolyard bully. Who is Dillian White's best win? Who? On paper, Joseph Parker. The second best win is Big Daddy Brown. And Dave Allen knocked him out. Dave Allen knocked him out quicker than Dillian. So, it is what it isn't. Is Joe Joyce a big stiff or just a, just a mummy? 
a poor version of George uh, of George Foreman. Look, jo, jo, uh, Joe Joyce, right? Did I say George Grosen? I meant Joe Joyce. Sorry. Is Joe Joyce a big stiff or a poor version of George Foreman, the mummy? Listen, Joe Joyce, if you actually you're going, but he's slow in. He's like ah, ah, ah. Look, Joe Joyce, right? His manager. He's a smart cookie. He gets a bit of a stick, Sam Jones. But let me tell you this. Joe Joyce is a very good fighter. He gave Big Doss Femi, the big weightlifter, nightmares for years up at the EIS. And I know that because McCracken told people that I know. Uh, Joe Joyce is no mug. If you're pinging Joshua around ring... You know, a mug. Ask Dave Allen if Joe Joyce is any good. Be old, strong mush, Joe Joyce. Tyson Fury says he needed a change. A change? And that Ben Davidson were offered the chance to stay on. Why should Ben Davidson be undermined by people in a camp? He had it a little bit, didn't he, with Freddie Roach and uh, Ricky Atten hovering about... Freddie Roach and Ricky Atten, it needs to be said, were hovering around Tyson Fury like a bee round honey, or like a fly round poo. They were hovering around, hovering around Tyson, hoping for crumbs. And that's the name of the game. Freddie Roach were a world champion boxer, so were Ricky Atten. Wiley old foxes. They know the game. That's it. They're just playing the game. They were hovering about. Ben Davidson did all the heavy lifting. He got all the weight off Tyson Fury. And they were hoping to take the spoils. Now, I think Ben Davidson were undermined enough, wasn't he? In the last few camps. He, wasn't, he wasn't given respect from day one. Everybody knows that. Not due to his ability. It was due to his age. Now, when Tyson's... Got you living at his house and he's ordering you about this and that. Tails wagging dog. The game is over. Peter wouldn't have let him get away with some of the things he were getting away with. With Ben. And that's it. Now, all I see happening here with Sugar Hill and Tyson is this. Remember my words. It will end in tears. And remember this as well. What I said months ago. Tyson Fury and Frank Warren will end in court all right it's the name of the game i'm very sceptical about the people in the boxing industry i trust one in ten people that i meet so be very weary if you send me an email and i don't send one back to you it's because i don't trust you i don't know you i don't trust you it takes a lot for me to get people's trust all right so it is where it is isn't it but that's just boxing, isn't it? That's just the name of the game. So, is Tyson worried about Wilder? You bet he's worried, man. He got dropped twice, second time, very heavy, right? He's he's brought help in, right? And he's trying to create. Tyson Fury is trying to create this. Aura that he's just going to have a shootout with Wilder. Because Wilder's going to have a shootout. He's not... Look, the word doing the rounds is Deontay Wilder is not going to want to be messed about for 12 rounds like he were last time. He's just going to get out there and he's going to put it on Fury. Now, Fury knows that. That's why he's got Sugar Hill on the job. Now, he was the guy helping Adonis Stevenson, wasn't he? Now, so Tyson's going to think that he's going to teach him how to punch, but... You can't, a leopard never changes its spots. You can't teach an old dog new tricks. Not at this stage of the game. Not when you're coming up to 32 years of age. Tyson Fury is not all of a sudden going to become a KO artist. Right, whatever. I'm going to give people some advice, right? And I want you to listen. Listen to this advice. And listen. Listen to what I'm going to say now. And listen very, very good, right? Listen very good. Whatever Tyson Fury says, think the opposite. 
and you're probably 85% at way there to, to solving the puzzle, alright? Think the opposite. If Tyson's saying he's going to KO Wilder, think the opposite. For example, he said he was going to knock Vladimir out in the second fight, didn't fight him. He said he was going to turn Francesco Pianetta into an Italian sausage. What happened? It was a 10 round boar feast. Right? Look what he said he was going to do to Otto Wallin. Jesus, if you look at the fight, Wallin should have been declared winner with that cut on Tyson. They put Tyson's sight at risk with that. And that's just what the powers that be do. So, right, we've had, I've had over 120 emails regarding merchandise. Now, I don't know what I'm doing with it, so don't quote me on this. Uh, I like to get the old odd bit of pocket stuff and wear it myself I don't like to see other people wearing it so I don't know how I'm going to work it I doubt we're going to do it uh, I did do it with K Official and the stuff were brilliant I've still got the K Official stuff and if you need anything go to K Official but I don't think I'm going to do merchandise I don't know, I very much doubt it uh, unless other people get involved with the channel and start you know, coming up with their own ideas and that I don't know but we don't need to be doing all like that at the moment, so no, we're not going to be doing anything. It's too much messing about for me. If I do anything, it'll be where I'll be wearing it myself, and there'll just be a few selective few that will get chance to buy it. Uh, a couple of my pals have got a few tops. Uh, I think Paul's Paul, one of my mates from uh, out is it Warrington way up that way. He's got one. Uh, Steve at Wales, he's got one. It's it's not something I'm looking at doing. The channel is it's paying for itself at the moment. It's not making a profit, but it's not costing anything. So that's good. So I'm happy with that. I didn't get in it for, to make loads of money. I just got in it to have an opinion and to help Dennis's fighters get a bit of PR. Mainly Liam Cameron and Tommy Frank. But Liam's... I don't know what Liam's doing now. He's waiting on his decision, isn't he? Uh, I think Liam's decision's on... Uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, Liam Cameron's decision. So, but the ch I'm not money motivated with this channel. It's just, I just do it to have an opinion. And like I said, there's nothing I like better than premiering a video and putting people like Superfly and Danny Ryan in their place. I just love pressing the timeout button. It's better than sex. I love it. Because I don't like to get involved in any of that back and forth. I just like to put them down when they come on. So that to me is money. That is wealth. All right. So I'm a man of principle. So all right. And I'll drink a glass to that. So Superfly and Danny Ryan. We know you're the same account, but I love it. I love it. I'm putting you down. All right. Take a time out, lads, and chill. <laughs> it's only banter. It's only banter. So, monkey shoulder that whiskey. Monkey shoulder, not bad stuff as well. But this Chateau Lafitte wine's not bad. Not bad after four mouthfuls of a Chinese meal. Waste of 12 quid. I'll give it to the dog. Now, this is how I look at it, right? We're boxing at the moment. We want the fights. Why should fans have to pay 25 quid a pot for pay-per-view that's not going to excite us. Who wants to see Joshua poo left? Nobody wants to see it, do they? We all think it's a load of poo. Poo lev. A dollar per poo left. Now, that's how I look at it. So, what happens from now on in with Joshua, I don't know. But, this is how I look at it. You see that there? What is that there? What is that there? That's Joshua's next opponent. That is Anthony Joshua's next opponent. 39 years of age, pushing 40 when they get in ring. Kubrat Pulaf, a gangster from Bulgaria who I've met. And actually uh, spent a bit of time with in Bulgaria before he fought Yui. His team are fantastic, but 
Let's have it right. His name's Pool F and he fights like Pooh. Joshua knows that. Joshua's team know that. But they're going to try and build it up as Joshua's vulnerable and blah de blah. They're going to wheel out Johnny Nelson, Jake Wood, Spencer Oliver. Bean! Runner Bean, should have been, could have been, never been. Baked Bean, Magic Bean, has been. They're going to wheel Bean out from Operation U Tree. And they're going to tell you that Joshua could get beat against Pulaf. And because it's a mandatory, his belts are not going to be there for a rematch. Because it's a Bob Arum. Because it's Bob Arum, uh, his advisor. Well, I look at it like this Joshua against Pulaf will go to purse bids. And let me tell you this that fight won't be in England, it'll be in Vegas. Alright? It will not be in England. At all. They don't risk another fight in England with Joshua. Do you know why? Because they gave thousands and thousands of tickets away. For that Povetkin fight. So. Alright. So. That's just the way it goes. So. Shout out to Robin Reed. Robin Reed Multivitamins. Good friend of mine, going to see him next week or week after. Robin Reed Multivit, shout out to Innovation Alloys at Sheffield and South Yorkshire Packaging at Rotherham. Peace out, keep on trucking, keep supporting boxing. All you amateur boxing fans out there, get yourself, get yourself to the show at Denneby at Tom Hill's Boxing Club on the 10th of January. Alright, that's in South Yorkshire, Doncaster. Or Doncaster, South Yorkshire. Peace out.